In this chapter, we will be talking about rotational motion. So we will now be studying objects which are going to be spinning in a circle. But at this point, we could say that the object is at rest at the beginning, and then the object starts to move. So if it's at rest and it starts to move, then it has some type of um, acceleration. So as you go to an amusement park and you sit on a circular type of ride, everybody's sitting stationary while they're getting strapped in, and then the ride starts to turn and to spin, and everybody's then would be moving in circular motion. So we want to talk about what happens as the ride starts to go in a circle. So it have, it'll have angular acceleration. You'll be moving through an angular um, displacement, and you'll have an angular velocity. Okay, so we want to talk about these things. So first of all, if I draw a unit circle, um, I could start here at this point A, and the point A is um, going to move to this point here, B. So as it moves, the point A will trace along this line, and in a math class, we would call that line the arc length. In many math books, they use the letter S, small letter S. This book's using the letter L. So it's a physical length that the, the um, object A just moved through. So A is just at the beginning. It starts at this point A and it ends at this point B. And the arc length is in meters. So the way that they define angles is we say the angle is equal to the arc length over the radius. So the angle is, gets defined as the arc length over the radius, and that in this case would be L over R. And when we do this, the angle is in uh, radians. So in our lives, it seems when we talk about angles, we typically talk about degrees. But in this case, we're talking about angles in terms of radians. So <clears throat> this is the definition of a radian when you're going through the arc length and you decide to um, divide it by the radius. In fact, when they, they talk about, uh, you know, what, what they do is they'll take this circle and they'll make it into um, two pi radians when you go around one time. So if you've done this in math in a trigonometry class, if you went around one complete time, well, what angle would we be talking about in that case? So we would say that the angle would be, well, what's the distance when you go around one complete time? That's called the circumference. And the distance you've just traveled is 2 times pi times r. So if I take 2 times pi times r as my arc length, and then I go and I divide it by the radius of that particular circle, so I divide it by r, what happens is the r's cancel out, and I have the angle is equal to 2 pi and its radians. And this is for one complete revolution. So a lot of times we would say that um, if we spin around in a complete circle, we would say we just pulled a 360, and that means they've just gone in a complete circular loop. Well, in this case, we've gone through a complete circle, but we would say it's 2 pi radians. If someone says they just pulled a 360, they're implying 360 degrees. Here we have 2 pi radians. And if you look, the unit for radians is actually dimensionless. It doesn't mean anything. It's a word just to communicate to everybody that we're talking about a specific type of an angle. But what does radians really mean? Well, arc length is in units of meters, and the radius is in unit of meters. So what you have is you have something with the unit of meters divided by something with the unit of meters, and when you cancel those out, or you divide out by m, you have nothing. You have basically one. So when we talk about radians, it's a dimensionless unit, but it is a way to talk about a certain degree, uh, sorry, a certain angle. Okay. We, could, um, we could rewrite this thing right here, um, and we could say something like, well, let's just, let me just leave it as that. So this is, this is the definition of the angle, how to get the angle. So when we talk in this chapter about something going through a circle, if we have a circle right here, and there's an object, and it's traveling along the edge of the circle, then you see 
it has just gone through a certain displacement, and that would be the angle. So in chapter two, we were talking about if an object, if somebody walked down the street, they would go through a physical displacement. They would walk through a physical distance. They would be displaced from their beginning position. And in this case, if they're going to be here, and then they're going to go through this circular path, then they have an angular displacement. So when we say theta, it means angular displacement. And it's in units of radians. So it's typical in our word problems to give us something where something, um, a wheel is turning and they tell us how many degrees the wheel goes through. Or they might say how many revolutions that wheel has turned through. We would need to know how to convert it into radians. So we need to know some identities. So as I just said a moment ago, if you started here and you went around a circle one complete time, we could call that one revolution. And one complete revolution is equal to 360 degrees, but that's also equal to 2 pi radians. So those three things there are all equal to each other, and that's an identity. When you find something where everything is equal to each other, um, we call it an identity. So if you, if you saw a word problem and it said, you know, um, a tire has just turned through 700 revolutions, what you would do is convert it into radians. So let's see how to do that. So if I'm asked to convert 700 revolutions, what I do is I write down 700 revolutions and I multiply it by a fraction. And this is the same type of conversion that I did at the beginning of the uh, first videos I made. So I will find a relationship. In one revolution, we have 2 pi radian. So I will get rid of revolution by putting one revolution down here. And I'll say I have 2 pi radian. And when I do that, revolution cancels out. And if I multiply this, it comes out to be 7 times 2 is 1,400. So it'll equal 1,400 times pi um, radians. And they just write rad for that. Uh, a math class might be really happy with that. In a physics class, you're going to have to take this number and plug it in. I would almost rather you just multiply pi as being the number 3.1415 and so forth. So if I took, there's a pi button on your calculator. You could use that for more um, detail. So it comes out to be 4,398 radians. It's actually a decimal point there, 0.23. And that would be the answer. That's how you would do something like that, to that effect. If we had a word problem based on this and they said, you know, you know there's an object going to be turning through an angle of 75 degrees, you would have to write that, but you would have to convert it into radians. So I would write um, my angle equals 75 degrees, and then I'd multiply it by a fraction. And what my fraction is, well, degrees would be right here. So I know if I want to get rid of that symbol, I will have to divide by 360 degrees, and the identity is with 360 degrees, it's 2 pi radians. So if you do that on your calculator, it comes out to be 0.654 radians. So just like in chapter one, when you talked about uh, an object moving down the road, say, they could tell you how far the object moved. They could talk about in terms of inches or in terms of yards or in terms of miles. And you would have to convert all of those into meters. And it's the same thing here. Any type of an angular displacement they talk about, we have to convert it into radians. Okay, so that's, that's the first thing. When we did chapter two, we started by talking about distance and it, it led towards displacement. And we learned displacement has a unit of meters. And then after that, we learned about speed and something called velocity. Well, this chapter is presented the same way. The first thing we did in this chapter is learned about the angular displacement. And it's represented by this letter here. Um, it's called theta. It's a Greek letter. And every math class that I know of uses theta as representation for an angle. And that angle has units of radians, as we've just discussed. And now the second thing that's presented is 
the angular velocity. Not the linear velocity, but the angular velocity. So the angular velocity deals with how is the angle changing with time. A linear velocity deals with how is the displacement changing with time. Now we're talking about how is the angle changing with time. So if you if you looked at a picture that on TV that maybe has um, um, sonar or or um, what do they call it when in the airports radar and they're watching the planes coming in or whatever, they have this screen and there's usually a blue fluorescent type of a line sweeping and going around and around. We will look at the angular speed, the speed at which this particular line is sweeping. And we use this letter to represent that. This letter is called omega. It's, a, it's basically a small letter W. It looks like a script letter W. And it's called omega, another Greek letter. And omega it has units of radians per second. Just like, just like velocity would have the units of meters per second, so we take this unit right here, which is the displacement, angular displacement unit, and we divide it by seconds. So instead of meters and meters per second, we deal with radians and radians per second. And um, that's what that, that means. Now, you've, you've probably heard or seen or used angular velocity units before. So if something says that it is moving at a certain number, let's just say something is moving at 200 RPMs. Okay, what they're talking about there is that's revolution. So I could write it this way: 200 revolutions per minute. Now, that is a certain type of a angle over a certain type of a time, just like this is. It's the radians per second. But what we want to do is we want to convert it to standard units. So what we would say is I'll get rid of revolutions. So in one revolution. There is two pi radians, and then again multiply it, get rid of minutes, and minutes is on the bottom here, put minutes on the top. In one minute, we have 60 seconds. So here, the units of minutes cancel out, and the units of revolutions cancel out. And if you just take your calculator, 200 times 2 pi divided by 60, you'll have something. That comes out to be 20.9. And the only units that are left, this unit right here is for radians, and this unit right here is for seconds. So as we go through this, you'll see you have so many radians per second that remains. So by definition, if I had to go back and talk about these for a moment, um, theta is defined as the arc length over the radius. The angular velocity, omega, is defined as um, the change in the angular velocity sorry, the change in the angular displacement over time. And so this one here would be the displacement. This one here is the velocity. And this one is the change of the angular speed over time. Now this is, this one here is a brand new one. So this one here is um, it's a Greek letter, and that Greek letter is called alpha. And it's defined as the change in the velocity, angular velocity, over the change in time. So in chapter two, what we would say is our velocity is defined as, our average velocity would be defined as the change in, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In chapter two, we would say our acceleration was defined as the change in the velocity over time. Now, in this chapter where things are going to be turning, we would say our angular acceleration is equal to the change of our angular velocity divided by time. So this has a unit of radians per second, and this has a unit of seconds. So alpha, which means the angular acceleration has units of radians per second squared. Okay, so I've tried to write that there. This particular thing is called alpha, and alpha has units of um, radians per second squared. So it's your angular acceleration. So if you went onto an amusement park ride, and it's going to be any, anything, it could be the merry-go-round. So the merry-go-round, um, when you get on the horse, 
the ride is not moving. So your angular velocity is zero. After a moment when they start, you start to travel very, very slowly in a circle. And they have a very, very small angular acceleration rate because this ride, it has a lot of times very little children on it and they don't want anybody to fall. So the angular acceleration would usually be a very small number. So at, as the ride starts, you're not moving at the beginning and then you're moving at a very slow angular speed and then a little bit quicker angular speed and then finally a little bit bigger angular speed. And then you'll reach the maximum angular speed you're going to be going through, which is not going to be such a great number. It's going to be a number, but not too p particularly big. Um, and you see, what you've done is you've accelerated because your angular speed kept on changing until you got to your maximum angular speed. And then the remainder of the ride was, was going around in a circle at that maximum angular speed. And, and then near the end, they decelerate you, so you begin to slow down.